When it comes to migrating websites where you can afford zero downtime or you don't want to affect the live site at all, there's actually an extremely easy way built right into your computer, both Windows and Mac, to seamlessly point your computer to a whole new IP address for any website you want. It's super easy to do and I'm gonna walk you through exactly how it works. So let's say for example, you have my live website right here, jonathanjernigan.com, and you want to move it to either an entirely new server or you want to create a staging version of the website that is only accessible by you. You can do that super easily without affecting the live site or the DNS of the live site at all, super simply with a file on your computer called hosts. This is effectively a local DNS record that you can use to manually override any DNS record out there on the internet. Most useful for us as web developers to point a domain to somewhere else that you want to only see yourself temporarily. So in this example, let's say we wanna take this jonathanjernigan.com and move it to a whole new host here on my cloud panel server. This is a totally different Hetzner VPS. And what I wanna do is ensure that this site never is affected until I'm certain that it's migrated over here to this version of the site without any issues at all. So here on this VPS, if I go ahead and click this URL, even though it looks like it's the same, when I click it, it's going to take me to the live version of the site because of course my DNS does not point to this server's IP address. Now, if I go to the file manager here in this particular install, you can see that it's just a raw WordPress install. If I go to plugins, for example, there's nothing in here except the just default stuff that ships with WordPress. But on my site, you know, I'm gonna have a gravity form for the contact page. I have generate blocks all over the site. There's tons of different plugins on here. So what I want to do is point my local DNS record via that host file back to this particular version of it. So we can make whatever changes we want, move a backup file over, confirm everything is working, and then switch our DNS to point to this particular IP and everything will move seamlessly. Before we do that, this video is brought to you by PyCalendar. PyCalendar is the most flexible and most lightweight calendar plugin available for WordPress. In just five minutes or less, you can turn any post on your website into an event that will appear on a front end calendar. Our obsessive approach to stability and performance means that you can trust PyCalendar to do exactly what it's supposed to do without updates that will end up breaking your entire site. But no bloat doesn't mean limited features because PyCalendar comes packed with tons of amazing features like recurring events, add to calendar links, adaptive time zones, ACF support, e-commerce integrations, and so much more. We also are currently offering a lifetime deal, which you can grab by visiting our website at pycalendar.com. So I'm gonna show you this on both Windows and Mac, but on Windows, what we need to do is browse down to a directory that is your local disk, then the Windows folder, System32, drivers, and then a folder called etc. etc. And the file you're looking for is this one here called hosts. It's just a file and it doesn't look like you can really modify it, but you actually can. You're gonna need to open this with something that has administrator privileges. So you might have to open Notepad as an admin, or in my case, what I do is just open it with VS Code because it's just a simple text file. And you can see here inside of my host file, I have a couple of entries that are pointing some local development domains to a specific local IP address. But what I wanna do in this case is redirect my live URL to a a different IP. So all we need to do here is put the destination IP address followed by the actual domain name that we want to work with. So in my case, I'm just going to drop in that server's IP address, press tab, and then I'm going to type in the URL, which is jonathanjernigan.com. I'm going to do control S on my keyboard to save, and we're going to get this notice down here that says insufficient privileges. So all I need to do is retry as admin. I'll trust and then click on yes. And now what's gonna happen is when we go open this, we're gonna see a totally blank WordPress install. So go ahead and just open this in a new tab. There's no SSL certificate installed here. We'll just proceed and there we go. So now this particular version of jonathanjernigan.com is just a blank WordPress install ready for us to do whatever we want to it while leaving the live site completely unaffected. So if you go to it right now, you're gonna see just the normal website. Again, to reiterate, this is just such a cool way to make sure that the changes you're making are functional and fully operational on the real live web server before the general public actually sees it. So like I mentioned earlier on in the video, if you have a website that can't afford downtime, or you just don't want it to look broken to your client, you can do something like this. Let me go ahead and show you how this works on Mac because the idea is very similar, but it's just a little bit different because the file lives in a different place on Mac and Linux. 
So here on the Mac side, what I'm going to do is open up Terminal because this allows us to edit that host file without any kind of permissions issues. If you try to open it just using the Mac text edit utility, you're going to get a notice that says you don't own this file and your only option will be to clone it. So what we're going to do is open Terminal. And what we'll do here is just use the built-in terminal text editor function, which is called nano. So what we need to do is do sudo nano and then slash etc slash hosts. And this is going to allow us to edit this etc host file just using this built-in text editor right here in the terminal. Press enter and it's gonna want your computer's local password. So I'll go ahead and enter that. And as soon as I enter my password, you can see that this host file looks pretty much identical as it did on the Windows side. So I just do the same thing, first starting with the IP and then the destination domain name. Then to save this on the Mac, you just do control O, press enter and then control X and you're out of that now. Then from here, I'll just fire up my browser. And again, we're gonna go to jonathanjernigan.com and the same exact thing is present here. We get that SSL warning. So then we can do whatever we need to the site on our computer here locally and not have to worry about any changes that are live to the general public. As you can see, this is a super useful utility in a variety of circumstances. And it's something that I use both for moving websites around and leaving websites totally unaffected when I wanna make big changes or even test things before they go live. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you wanna learn more helpful stuff like this on a regular basis, consider joining my community. It's 20 bucks a month and you get access to all of my courses and live workshops, as well as the ability to ask questions and learn from other members. Link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.